Hello everyone, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you two magazines I've built. Um, but first, if you have been following the channel for a long time, well not even a long time, it's pretty obvious, I don't hide it. Um, my reading skills are terrible, especially, you know, I'll read something off an album cover and I can't do it. Um, I'm just a bad reader. There are, I have dyslexia, which doesn't help, but it's mainly just because I don't read at all. And I also, I want to change that. Uh, so today I was in a shop called Sainsbury's, which you won't get if you're not English. Um, and I found this cool magazine, which I'll show you in a sec. But first, I want to show you this one, which I have showed on the channel before. I bought this in a Walmart in Tennessee, which was the strangest place in the world to find it. It was by the shop counter as well, or the checkout tills. Um, and I haven't actually read it. It's been sat here. Last time I was in America was early 2020. So it's been here a good year. And unfortunately, it's a bit... <laughs> it's been stretched the wrong way. It's a bit crumpled up. But it's basically just a Rolling Stone special edition. The Beatles, the ultimate album by album guide. And it has some really... God damn it. Some really great photos in it and it just details the whole Beatles uh <clears throat> sorry Beatles discography so as you go along you've got these cool pages about the album and then it will go into like uh, there a track by track which is really cool it's essentially what I do in my reviews but a lot better no well yeah it is I'll be honest it's just really cool, and there's just so many photos I'd never seen before of the Beatles. There's George and his... I love the hair of the early Beatles. It's that mop top, uh, track by track. These photos are fantastic, and I mainly haven't read this because... See, there's another one. I've never seen that before. I don't know if you don't like the Beatles, you probably don't find this interesting, but I do. I think it's brilliant. The Beatles are one of the greatest bands of all time. When, when the Beatles started to record Help in February 1965, they knew it was time to broaden their approach. New groups like The Zombies, great band, The Kinks, incredibly underrated, The Animals, were, soaring hit, were scoring hits with a more aggressive sound, and the Beatles were increasingly interested in music outside of the rigid two-minute pop song formula. While their previous album, Beatles for Sale, was, was cut over just a few days scattered between tour dates, the Beatles were given a little more time to focus on help, really seeing for the first time the possibilities of the LP as an art form, and not just a collection of songs. By Christmas 1964, it seemed the Beatles could do no wrong. In less than a year, they had gone from being virtual unknowns in America to four of the most for the most famous people in the country. They were even bigger back home in Europe, and the past year had been a um, whirlwind of sold-out stadiums, record-shattering record hit singles, and even a hit movie. The plan for 1965 was to do it all over again, starting with another movie and another soundtrack. John Lennon and Paul McCartney had been on a creative role that produced All My Loving, Can't Buy Me Love, and She Loves You, and A Hard Day's Night, and I Love Her So, oh, and I Love Her, sorry, and many other classics. Producer George Martin was worried they might be, was worried they might be taped. Taped? I don't know, I can't read. <laughs> no, it does say taped, I don't know what that means. At the start, I thought, God, this can't last forever. He wrote in his memoir, All You Need Is Ears. They've given me so much great stuff that I can't expect them to keep doing it. But they did. They amazed me with their fertility. John and <clears throat> John Lennon and Paul McCartney began sketching out songs for help soundtrack during their downtime from their Christmas show at London's Hammersmith. It's cool. And then essentially just that, and it goes on... So there's the big famous uh, Beatles, I forget where, I think it's San Francisco, uh, in America. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, no, it's the Odin, uh, Weybrook. Does it say? No, it doesn't. I oh, know it does. The Beatles take stage, yeah, yeah, it is, at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, 
August 29th, 1966. It's really cool. Right, so that's amazing. Uh, if you can find this, it's a, it must be a good read. But what I picked up today just seemed really cool. But it was £8. Like, blah. Anyway, <laughs> Oasis. The Mojo's The Collector Series. What's the story? 1999, 2021. So this goes over their later career in Oasis. So like post 2000s. And it looks so cool. Um, when Oasis... <clears throat> Yeah. When Oasis performed to an astonishing 250,000 fans at Nebworth Park in summer of 1966, they cemented their status as the biggest and most influential British rock band in a generation. But as the decade wore on, tensions within the group reached a breaking point, and in 1999, founder members Bonehead and Gwigsy seized... Oh, pardon me. Sensationally quit during the recording of the band's fourth album, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. The Oasis story would therefore have to focus even more tightly on the volatile relationship between the Gallagher brothers, ending it in a spectacular backstage fight in Paris in 2009 that finally destroyed the group. In this deluxe magazine, we bring together Mojo's finest writing on Oasis's later years, from the disintegration of the classic 90s lineup and the band's new phase as an international stadium act to the Kalim Cal Calim Cal that's not a word Kalimpitus split in France and the going on highs and lows of Nolan Liam solo careers we hope you enjoy it and if you missed what's the story 1990 that's the other one oh cool so yeah I mean, I'm not going to read all of this but it's just got some Really great photos in it of the boys and oh well and the rest of the band. <laughs> Honestly, I love Oasis and this goes over some of my favourite albums. Uh, but yeah, I'm really going to kick into gear and really try and start reading because it's gotten real bad. And reading's good for you; it's really good for your brain. Um, reading a book or any any paper is so much better than uh, reading something on a Kindle or on a screen. Um, it rots your, it doesn't rot your brain, that's a boomer thing to say, but it's bad for your eyes, whereas reading, because language is such an integral part of what we do, reading is really good for your brain functions, and that's a whole other video in itself, but if you have any suggestions of books or magazines uh, related to music, or it doesn't have to be related to music, but if it is related to music, it'd be easier for me to read it, because I love music. But yeah, if you have any suggestions, leave them down below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna next video up on the channel will be a big Beatles video because I'm gonna do it's a review for Magical Mystery Tour. But because that album's not very interesting, or it's not you know it's not gonna be a long video. I'm gonna talk about all my other Beatles albums, like the extra stuff that I've got in the video. It's gonna be great. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.